Hi YouTube, this is Tinka Oh Yes Lady, and I am doing a brief update at the nine week point of my homeschool journey. As you all know, if you um, are new to my channel, it's the first time seeing one of my videos, I am transitioning from using an online cyber school to doing a more classical homeschool curriculum um, program with my two students. One is um, basically um, almost a high school student and my other student is in the fourth grade. Both of them are girls and we live here in the state of Pennsylvania which has one of the stricter um, has some of the stricter rules for homeschooling. So what I wanted to discuss today is a book that I purchased in June of the summer that just passed and I began reading it. I picked it up at a Barnes and Nobles while they were having a closing out sale. Um, this book is really good. It's very similar in my belief to maybe um, something like the um, well-trained mind books that basically tells you everything that your child needs to know um, from year to year um, and it's based on um, school standards, national standards um, and the ability of the child and what you um, decide to do so it basically just gives you suggestions and a guide and you need to um, pick and choose what's going to work for you okay this book is by Home Learning Year by Year by Rebecca Rupp. It's how to design a homeschool curriculum from preschool through high school. Um, there is a chapter for each school year. So there's a kindergarten chapter, preschool chapter, all the way up to your high school chapter. And you will go to each chapter, which will, for instance, I will go to my fourth graders chapter and there will be um, different subjects language arts, math, history, geography, science, foreign language, art, music, health, and physical education. And this goes on for each chapter in each grade level. Each one of those subjects are addressed. When you go to each chapter and then you go to each subject, if it's under language arts, they are going to give you um, resources, book lists, um, some teaching strategies, some activities and ideas, and um, basically some books that you uh, may want to purchase or try to find on your own to supplement this book. So I really feel that this is a really good book. This has been ultra helpful. Um, when I go to doctor's appointments or any place that I have to wait for a while, I always bring this book with me. It's something that I refer to almost daily just to make sure that I'm on track or um, just to continually get information from. So this book to me is very valuable. I think this is a great book for anyone who's just starting out and you just need some guidance. Um, because this is not something that is easily done um, alone. Um, some additions that I wanted to mention is that um, I have um, ordered some books that haven't come in yet because I just ordered them like a day or so ago. So what I ordered was um, a science book and a workbook for my fourth grader and a science book and a workbook for my eighth grader slash ninth grader and um, a few other books for her as far as civics and history and um, some more um, algebra. Um, and that is because, like I said before, I preface everything by saying this is what we're using right now because I give everything a chance and then I decide whether or not it's going to work for us if, if, if that book is that that right fit for my child. So um, I'm have probably multiple books for each subject at the moment. Not a lot, just like maybe one or two. Um, so other additions that I've added, um, ordered rather, is Kingfisher's Science and History Encyclopedias. I have heard from other homeschoolers and I read reviews about these two books. They're um, basically huge reference books that go through just about every topic in science and just about um, every um, time in history from you know in history up till the present date so I think that would be a valuable valuable resource for us and we may just follow the history book 
um, especially for my fourth grader. As you know, my ninth grader is using the Story of the World by Susan Bauer. I love that. My only concern with it is that it goes from the nomads to the end of the um, Roman era. Um, the standards or the uh, criteria that the state of Pennsylvania is using for her age group this year is not that time. So even though these are wonderful books, you have to make sure it also fits what your um, school district is um, saying that you have to do. In my particular case, I have to do that. So I am just going to be adding the Kingfishers also to it so that we can do other things. I want to do um, more timelines. So that is the reason why I got these two books because they both seem to be in a chronological order and I will be able to easily um, match different things up together and make it work with what we already have. One other thing that I have found is a wonderful resource, and I know I may be late on this, and a lot of people use this, as I know, is the Dollar Tree, which is a dollar store. It's a chain dollar store. They have um, really, really updated and up their, um, their game as far as uh, school supplies. So I'm finding that probably a lot of teachers get their supplies there. So some items that I found there uh, more recently, and I do plan to go back to see if there's other things, is um, some, some board games that are educational. And these board games um, are on different topics. This is about Element Connection. This is a, a game. And Element Connection is a standards-based game. Um, it fits the state standards in science. It doesn't say what grade, but it's a state standards in science. And it's a game about chemical elements. So you get this big board and you get um, these are the game pieces with the elements um, on one side and what they are on the other and it's just a huge uh, matching game. Um, also at the Dollar Tree to go along with that when we get to the periodic table is this handy dandy periodic table um, semi laminated not a real thick laminate but it's pretty um, strong it has the table on one side and on the other side it has the list of all of the elements with the atomic weights and symbols and their names and their atomic number so that we can have that. I love that this has holes in it so that we can put it in our notebook. Okay, that's one game and it folds all up into this neat folder. They have a lot of different games like this at the Dollar Tree. The next one is called Blast Off Standard Base Folder Game. This is another standard based um, folder game that is in science and this one more is about um, the solar system and this too opens up. It's basically a folder that opens up to a game board. Here's a smaller view of what the whole board looks like. And it comes with these cards that has blast off on one side and different trivia. It's like a trivia game on um, the planets, the solar system, etc. So since I am doing the solar system with my fourth grader at this moment, it's going to be a wonderful, cute little game for her and I to play. It even has two little um, game pieces that goes with it. Another one that I got, I'm going to speed up is um, a game called Trivia 500. Excuse the noise in the background. Um, Trivia 500, it's a standard base folder game aligned with state standards in science. This is another one. This will engage students with fun and interaction. It's a perfect group learning, perfect for group learning and supplies remediation and enrichment for all students. This science trivia game looks like a racetrack. Okay. When you open it up, and here is a more condensed view of it, and this has two cards 
that you will split into little cards. I have one that I've already split the cards up, but it's downstairs. And it has different um, trivia on there, like what is the term that identifies the point at which a solid changes into a liquid state? And then the answer is on there, and it's um, the melting point. Okay. So you would go back and forth and quiz each other and move around the board. Another one that I was that I purchased from Dollar Tree is Fraction Dominoes, a standard based folder game aligned with state standards and mathematics. It also does not say what grade, so you will have to decide, you know, what grade this is for. Obviously this is on fractions, this would not be for my older student, but also I picked up with this another insert. Um, and this has um, a fractions number line, this has symbols, operations gallery, um, a multiplication table at the bottom, and on the back it has a fraction chart with little pies on the side that shows you know a fraction in the um, pie graph form and then in a fraction form and then whole number and then in percentages. So that is great for when I get to that. And then it has all of these cards that say fraction domino on one side. And then all of these pies and um, fractions or whole numbers on the other side. And you will match it up like dominoes. So I'm excited to play that when we get to that. Um, the third one, well the fourth one, is my road trip game that I'm going to play with both of them. And this is Road Trip USA, standard based folder game aligned with state standards in social studies. And this is all about uh, places in our United States and their capitals and different facts about them. So you also will receive cards that goes with this about each state and includes capitals and uh, basic information like what the state bird is, the flower, and etc. And you just go around the board doing that. Now also what I um, picked up to go along with this also from the Dollar Tree is this insert that can be put into a notebook and it has a map of the United States of America on one side, semi laminated, like I said, it's not real stiff, but it's shiny and glossy and it should hold up. And then on the back of this is all the state's facts, and it has a list of every state and their basic facts. Not a lot. If you want to go into detail, maybe about your own state and, um, you know, just more general about the others, that would be great. But it just gives you the capital, the bird, and the flower. Um, this is something I'm really interested in. I like to do this kind of thing a lot with the kids because I think they should know a lot about where we live. And I also have a children's atlas um, that basically goes state by state and it's more set up for my little guy who's three years old. He loves that book and we go through and he points at what's the bird, what's the tree, what's the flower, what's the capital, and they have little dot the dots and stuff like that that goes with each state. So. Basically, that's where I'm at right now. This is my homeschool update for right now. Um, I am still um, working on getting a lot of worksheets together so that I can do something similar to like work boxes with them so that um, there are some days where they can just go straight to the box and do their work for that day with um, minimal interaction, especially on days where um, we may be occupied with other things or around the holidays where I just want them to get themselves up on their own time and do their work and we have um, Thanksgiving rapidly approaching so um, that's it for me this is Tinka OES Lady with an update on my homeschool journey um, everything is going great for right now um, you know it's still very hard um, to do the homeschooling um, as far as um, keeping organized and all that stuff and just, you know, staying on task. But other than that, I'm having a great time this year. The kids have a lot of confidence because they don't feel like they are um, constantly behind um, like they did feel on the cyber school last year. So please rate, comment, and subscribe. This is Tinka OES Lady. Thank you.